Good morning and welcome to day number one of the five day video series challenge. The four tools you need to start launching your chiropractic practice in just one week. Coming up today, we're going to get you prepared to launch that practice. Stick around to get all the details and your first strategy to get that practice launching fast. Hi, I'm Dr. Scott Doherty, the chiropractic growth coach. That's what I do. I grow chiropractic practices. <clears throat> and after growing my own chiropractic business to include seven practices that were bringing in over six and a half million dollars worth of revenue annually at that time, I sold my practices. And now I spend all of my time and put all my focus onto using the exact same strategy that I developed to make my own practices so successful to grow other chiropractors' practices. And that's exactly what today and the next four days are going to be all about. I'll be giving you the exact strategy that you need to start launching the new heights of success every day. Hopefully, you've created your uh, five-day video series challenge account. But if you haven't, be sure to click the link after today's video to do that. It's free, and it'll give you access to the recording of each video in the series. You'll also get access to a downloadable worksheet for each strategy that I'm going to be teaching this week. So now, who's ready to get down to today's strategy, which is preparing to launch? Uh, I see a few people join us here, so I know a few of you are. Chris and Taryn and Kenneth, thanks for stopping by. Uh, so let's talk about preparing to launch. Just as the same as with a rocket launch, which you know I talk about often, there are steps that have to be taken, planning that has to occur before that rocket launches. You can't just decide to launch it, then jump right in, cross your fingers, and hope for the best. You can, and quite honestly, that's better than, than not launching at all, but it's much, much better if there's preparation involved. And you have to make some decisions before you start working on the launch process itself. That's exactly what I'm teaching you today. So be sure you have your worksheet, and if you don't have it yet, be sure that you click the link uh, again after this video is over and get your copy. Grab your coffee, if that's what you drink, uh, and give me the next 15 minutes or so of your time. I promise you will not regret it. There are two components to getting prepared to launch your practice. Number one is goal setting, uh, getting your, and number two is getting your policies and your procedures in place. So let's dive right into goal setting. I want you to take a few minutes or even a, an hour today and think very hard on what your goals you have for your practice. Too often when I visit practices and ask what their goals are, we don't even know them. We might have written them down years ago, but they need to be for, at the forefront of our mind. So sit down today and think about what they are. Maybe go and grab some old goals that you wrote down, but you forgot what they are. Uh, and again, when I do goal setting uh, workshops with my offices that I work with and their staff, they don't all have the same goals. They're all trying to accomplish something different. So it's very important that you're clear on your goals. So maybe it's a certain number that you want to make, a certain amount of money. Uh, maybe it's a certain amount of new patients that you want. Maybe it's expanding your building, creating more space. It doesn't matter what your goals are, but they have to really mean something to you. And they have to follow a few guidelines. I'm going to lay out those guidelines for you in just a few minutes. But the key thing here is that you can't just write down a few goals because they sound good, because they're what every other chiropractor wants to attain, so you think that that's what you need to do. Your goals have to actually mean something to you. They have to be goals that will do big things for you and for your practice. Things that will change your business and change your life. Ones that you're passionate about. That's what we're looking for here. So I mentioned that your goal setting needs to follow certain guidelines also. And the first guideline is the number of goals that you create that I want you to set. Now, ideally, I want you to come up with as big of a list of goals as you can possibly think of. I want you to sit down and I want you to brainstorm all the things that you want to accomplish in your life, not just the next month, three months, but over your lifetime. Just write them all down. Uh, again, just brainstorm them. But once you're done, spend some time looking over that list. And I want you to choose three to five of them that really stick out to you. Science has showed us that only three, we can only focus on those three to five at one time. So those are goals that just jump off the paper and you just know that these are the most important to you. Then I want you to focus on those three to five goals for the rest of these guidelines, all right? So again, sit down, brainstorm them all out, but then give me the top three to five. Uh, I see Dennis, Robert, Brennan, and Braden all stopping by to say hello. And please do that. Say hello in the comments. Just let me know you're here. Uh, let me know you're paying attention. So, with those three to five in mind, 
I want you to get very, very specific with these goals. I want you to spell them out exact, exact, exactly. Excuse me. Uh, I got distracted by the rain. We are having torrential downpours over here. A uh, big thunderstorm this morning that I got to wake up to for my morning routine, which was great. I actually love that. Uh, but right now, it is coming down hard. Anyways, distracted me. Get as detailed as possible with these big, with these big goals that we talked about. After you write them out in a very, very detailed fashion, you have to put time frames to each one of them. So each of these big, important goals. Now, notice I'm saying the time frames afterwards. When you look at those three to five, I want you to pick those out without thinking about time frames. Like, what are the big things to you? Now we go back and put time frames to them. If I were to tell you what are your big three to five in the first three months, they might be different than what are your big three to five in total. So we want those total things, then we want to put time frames on them. Uh, without a set time frame, they're going to end up in your list of, of someday dreams, uh, things that you wish would happen but never happen. But when you set these time frames, don't get caught up in what's realistic or what's possible. I don't want you to be afraid to make big, audacious goals. Uh, in fact, just this, my last on-site out in Oregon, I was doing a goal-setting workshop with the team, and they were, you know, I asked them to set goals for their practice. And they had this mindset of, you know, now or what time frame? And I, I left it open. Uh, I just said, tell me what you want to do. Uh, we'll set the time frame later as to what's possible. Uh, as we'll talk about here in a second, you know, there, there are jumps along the way. You really can't go from here to here in one jump. There are smaller jumps along the way. Uh, but again, I want you to think about time frames now. I will tell you, however, that the time frame most people put on their goals is way too long. It's way too far off in the future. Uh, you can accomplish a lot more than you think you can quickly. So the time frames that I use with my clients uh, are three months. I want you to set three months goals. Once you set six month goals, once you set one year, two year, and five year goals, and then you can have a lifetime goal as well. But I want you to lay those things out in each of those three to five goals, and maybe you have a practice goal. So I want you to set a three month, a six month, a one year, a two year, and a five year. Uh, but again, what I typically do is take those goals that people set for a year and bring them back to three months because I know that that's possible. Uh, in doing what I do and growing practices fast, I've seen it happen so many times, I know it's possible. So once you have your very specific, most important to you, three to five goals with set time frames, then it's time to do what arguably is the most important step in this process. And that's to break down each of those goals into actionable steps. You're like, is my mic okay? Uh, <laughs> probably not when I'm playing with it. Sorry, but I feel like it's uh, folding under. Uh, without figuring out how you're going to get there, again, goals are just wishes or dreams. So once you take the time to map out the steps that you need to take to reach those goals, then they're one step closer to becoming a reality. Uh, so again, take each one of those goals and say, well, what do I need to do? And then there's the whole be, do, have thing. Who do you need to be uh, in order to create those things? And then what are the action steps that you need to do? And that's another thing I talk about in my goal setting workshops with when I'm doing on-site is once we set up those goals for practice, is how are we going to function differently before we were functioning as this practice? And if we want to function as, as this practice, we need to become the people that have that kind of practice, but then we also need to do the things that those type of people would do. Uh, so again, set up those action steps. So here's an example. One of your goals may, to, may be to bring in a certain amount of money each month. Now, obviously, the goal is that amount of money, but you have to break down how many patients you'll have to see in a week in order to reach that amount each month. Once you figure that out, you have to map out the steps you'll need to take to, to make up the gap between the number of patients you see now and how many you need to see to reach your goal. Uh, in this instance, you know, you'll want to focus on increasing your referrals, doing some marketing events, fix, fixing your patient compliance and retention and uh, conversion, things like that. So you see how that worked? Start with a goal. We're reverse engineering your goals and getting very specific about how you'll get to the point where you see your goal become a reality. Now, I mentioned a few minutes ago that I don't want you to focus too much on, on what's realistic when it comes to setting your time frames. But it, oh, and now I, I apologize, realistic, uh, because fast growth is realistic. Uh, but again, people just don't think of it that way. They've been beaten down. So it is important to keep in mind when you're putting numbers to your goals, if they're number related, remember that you can launch. You can make big jumps really quickly. But you're not going to go from a $20,000 uh, per month practice to a million dollar practice overnight. 
I want you to focus on your next big jump, the next launch, not the end goal for when you retire. I want you also to be sure that your goals are all measurable. Uh, without those time frames set and the ability to measure your progress, you're quickly going to become discouraged and forget what you're working towards. And when we started this, I told you I want you to go back and maybe grab some old goals that you had and bring them out and refresh your mind. That's exactly it. You probably wrote them down. You put them in a shelf, uh, put them in a drawer. You forgot all about them. Uh, you got discouraged because they didn't happen fast enough. Those, that's not what I want this time. I want to make sure that we get this thing right. All right. I see Tyler coming along as well. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, again, everybody on here right now, just uh, put hello or give me a wave in the comments. Let me know you're paying attention. Before you can start launching, though, again, that next launch that we're setting goals for, you have to be sure that some, uh, some things are in place. I'm going to go over each one of those. And your worksheet uh, has a checklist for you to mark them off as you do your checkup on them. So again, we're going to go through a little checkup for your practice to prepare you to launch. As you go through these different aspects of your practice, one thing I want you to keep in mind, no matter what size practice you have right now, I want you to focus your attitude and your mindset and act like a top-notch organization from now on out. I want you to start thinking like and acting like the kind of company you want to create. It doesn't matter if it's just you and one staff member right now. Once you start adopting a top-notch organization mindset, success tends to follow pretty quickly. Too often we get caught up in where we are as opposed to where we want to go. And I want you to start behaving like where you want to go. Good morning, Tyler. Good morning, Chris. So first, as far as the policies and procedures goes, I want you to go through and do a self-audit of your compliance manual. I know that's, that's awfully sexy, right? Uh, I know that's not the thing you want to think of, but you got to protect yourself. I want you to make sure everything is being done by the book because trust me, this is always the best practice. Woo! Hopefully I'm still on. Did you all hear that? I don't know if that got in the mic or not, but we just had a big thunder. Still going. I feel like I need to be protected right now. Anyways, it's still rolling out there. I'm not sure if you can hear the mic because uh, it tries to pick up just me, but that was loud. Big boom nearby. Remind me of a time. Uh, I feel like I want to tell this story. I know it's supposed to be a five-day video series challenge, but I want to tell the story because I'm in my garage right now, and that noise was not very far away just over there. Reminds me of a time, first house my wife and I lived in. I was out in the garage uh, sawing some stuff. I was putting the floor down uh, in our kitchen. So I was sawing the flooring, uh, and I had the garage door about halfway open uh, just to let some wind in there and, and keep it cool. And I went back inside to install one of the pieces, and my wife's like, there's like tornado warnings and stuff. I'm like, ah, I heard the sirens, but it's probably just a, you know, a test or something like that. So I'm out there sawing and working for like an hour. I finally look out. I see people, a bunch of feet going across under my garage. So I sneak out underneath, and I look where they're going. They're all walking up the street like, it was weird. Like it was a big rush of people, not rush, but they weren't rushing. They were like looking the house next to me, 20 feet away, maybe 50. I don't know. Uh, the garage was gone. It had completely gotten wiped out by a tornado. It went right past us somehow missed my garage, but I was out there working and I was like, ah, it's no big deal. Uh, but the whole neighborhood, like 50 feet away from me, it kind of crossed right across us. So anyways, when I heard that thunder boom, it just reminded me of that moment. Uh, all right. Oh, they did hear it. Cool. Anyways, <laughs> so it's best to be safe. And I was not safe that night in my garage. You got to protect yourself. So your compliance manual, number one thing you should go through. Then I want you to go through your employee manual or your employee handbook, whatever it is. I want to make sure you have all your agreements are in place, including your, your non-disclosure agreements, your arbitration agreements, an employee agreement, and be sure that they're all signed. Uh, I work with people all the time that, that ask me for agreements when they've had associates for years um, and they don't have an agreement with them. They're just going to handshake. And I, I'm a handshake guy, but I also have learned after having 42 associates and, and geez, I had 72 employees at one time. So hundreds of employees come through my businesses uh, that, well, and from being divorced, uh, you go into every relationship thinking it's going to work out, uh, but you've always got to have the stuff in place and you've got to protect your business. So make sure that you have all your employee agreements signed, I's dotted, T's crossed. That's right, right? Uh, and make sure that everything's in place so that you're protected. Again, it, as you start to make a launch, you start to make a big jump. These are some things that A, scare people and B, sometimes take people down. So get them in place 
beforehand. Get yourself prepared to launch. Be sure that everything is spelled out clearly when it comes to things like what you expect from your employees and what they can expect from you. Make sure you're very, very clear about any situation that could come up. I always have clients try to clearly spell out the responsibilities and tasks for each position in their practice, in their office system manual or their practice manual. I want you to be very clear on what each staff member is expected to do. In fact, having a daily checklist is ideal. When I was in practice, and I've talked about this several times, each of my staff had daily checklists for each of their responsibilities and tasks. So it was just a little spreadsheet that they would check off every day or initial every day. Um, and then they would put that on my desk at the end of every day. And every, next morning, they'd come in, grab it off my desk, and go back and check it up. End of the day, they put it out there again. Uh, and I can tell you, I never once looked at those checklists. I never once checked to see if they actually did the things they do. It was just the process of them having to do it. Uh, and they didn't know I didn't look at it that made them, that held them accountable. And trust me, it makes a huge difference. Uh, now, I also have clients who, who look at them and, and call people out. Uh, the rule was for us that if you, if you didn't do it, don't check it off. Like, if you miss something every once in a while, that's okay. But if you didn't do it and you check it off or you initial it, you're fired. Uh, don't lie to me either. Just be clear about the, the steps that your staff has to do and make sure that they initial them. And always be sure to include consequences for not meeting expectations or responsibilities or if, if they commit an offense. And smell, spell out the termination procedures so we don't have any issues later if you do have to fire somebody with them coming back and suing you, uh, unemployment, all that kind of stuff. Be very, very clear about what it leads to termination. That just came up last night. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, that works with kids also, uh, I'm finding out. I've done it before, but we kind of relaxed over the summer. I told you we were doing summer shows and I was doing summer parenting. We're trying to get back into uh, school parenting. So last night I had to sit down with the kids and spell out what each offense led to. If you don't do this, this is what happens. If you do these things, this is what happens. Uh, and I got really good, good uh, buy-in from them. So same thing with employees uh, as with children in that way. So instead of getting to a point where it gets uncomfortable, spell that stuff out earlier. You have to take a good look also at your new patient procedures. And now we're going to be talking about that over the next couple days here. But you want to look at, before you, as you're preparing to launch, you want to look at the way that a new patient perceives your facility. A good majority of your goals will probably center around bringing in more new patients or more patients in general. And if your patient procedures aren't top notch and they're not up to date, then it won't do you any good because they, they won't keep coming back. And you'll be creating more headaches than what you're really wanting. And I see a lot of practices like this. And it's funny. Um, again, just had this in an on-site recently that when we set goals for the practice, I asked them how many new patients they wanted. They all set a goal higher than where they were right now. And I explained to them that if you get more new patients, it's going to hurt your practice, not help your practice. And they're all like, kind of, what are you talking about? But their systems and their procedures were not prepared to handle that many new patients. And they were actually not doing a great job of retaining them anyway. It was just a lot of turnover. And now the doctor has to spend longer with a new patient. Um, so you've got to go through and make sure that you got your conversion, your retention, your compliance stuff before you get new patients. What you're really wanting to do is get, in my opinion, less new patients who want to keep coming back rather than trying to churn over those new patients. So in order to do that, you need to get inside of a new patient's mind. You need to walk through your facility. You need to figure out, is your office easy to find? If not, find a way to fix that. Obviously, you can't move the building per se, but at least make sure that your staff tells them how to find the office. Send them email directions, whatever it might be. Are they greeted warmly by staff? Are they placed in an inviting reception area? When they're given paperwork, is it professional and presentable? I've talked about it many times. Please don't have a copy of a copy. Uh, just a really dimly uh, copied uh, new paper, patient paperwork that's all kind of crooked or askew. Uh, so how do you rate in the comfort measures department? Are your bathrooms easy to find and are they clean? Uh, is there water, coffee, or tea or something available? Look at your exam rooms. Are they pristine and uncluttered? Do you have systems in place to let patients know what they can expect from you for scheduling, for billing, for everything in between? Now, I know this sounds like a headache and a good deal of work, but trust me. If you want or need to bring in new patients in order to reach any of the goals that we set earlier, and these things aren't all set up and ready, you're basically wasting your time. You're going to have that churn that we just talked about. It's absolutely essential that you have your policies and your procedures in place if you want to create a launch in your practice, if you want to jump from that one level to the next level quickly, 
you've got to set this foundation first. I talk about preparing to launch like if you're going to jump, right? First thing you do is go down before you can jump up. This launch prep is exactly that. And you need a good stable foundation in order for that to happen. And that's what these policies and procedures are going to give you. One of the biggest strategies that will help you reach at least most of the goals that you set is a strategy to achieve the elusive perfect case acceptance. And a lot of people think that that can't happen, but trust me, it is possible. And day two of your video series challenge is going to teach you exactly how to do that. So get your worksheet for day one. Take some time today to set your goals and work through them. Lay them all out. Check up on your policies and procedures. Uh, at least get it, uh, the process started. And be back tomorrow for day two in the series. The series, obviously, is the four tools you need to start launching your practice in just one week. Uh, but tomorrow, we're going to show you how to get that retention and compliance that we just talked about in this show. Everybody have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.